What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGSki 2023 moveset guide video. Today we're going to talk about Hisuian Samurai, which along with Cleaver are like the only two Pokemon in the game with an attacking move that sets hazards, and that is the value of that cannot be understated, like that is an insanely powerful tool. So we're going to go over how you can use it in VGC, um, how competitively viable I believe it is, and uh, a couple of movesets that I think are going to be uh, pretty solid for it. So yeah, let's go ahead and just get right into it. So, Isuian Samurai is a water and dark type, and its uh, its stats are okay. If we actually, I always forget to pull up the original Pokemon. If we compare it to uh, regular Samurai at level 50, so we can look at like some stat benchmarks. Um, here we go. So if we compare it to regular Samurai, uh, what basically happened is uh, they made it a little bit frailer, but a little bit faster, and they actually gave it stats where it wants it. Regular Samurai was kind of funny because um, it looks like a physical attacker, right? Uh, but its strongest move, because of its high special attack stat, would usually be like a special attack, like Hydro Pump or whatever. Um, and yeah, it did have access to like Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, uh, all this and that. But it struggled to find a niche and like just be something you'd want to use over another water type. Uh, when it was basically just your run-of-the-mill average water type with access to ice coverage. It, it was nothing special, really. Uh, so now with Hisuian Samurai, it does actually get some fun little tools. Water and Dark is a great off, uh, a great offensive typing. Uh, it does have access to some stuff like Knock Off, which now has Stab. And of course, Ceaseless Edge, that 65 base power move boosted by Sharpness to the same power as Knock Off, effectively, 97. Um... And also sets up a layer of spikes every time you use it. So yeah, that's basically its most important move. And it, it, if you're running Hisuian Samurai, not running Ceaseless Edge is basically throwing. Like that's the point of the Pokemon. So let's talk about movesets. I only really have two for you guys. And that's because uh, in experimenting with Hisuian Samurai, I found it to be pretty underwhelming, but still fairly like it, it, it works, right? Um, but it only really works on hyper offense from my experience. And it's, it's for the same reason that Cleaver really only works on hyper offense. You're limiting counterplay to stuff like, you know, choice specs, Flutterman, or like a wood hammer from a Rilla boom, or even under trick room, just like guts boosted facade, uh, from flame orb or Saluna. So basically by getting these spikes up, you're sending things into range where they no longer live those hits. A lot of people will calc to like live a Specs Moonblast on a roll or on one on like 1%. Or opposing Fluttermane will calc to live Ice Spinner on 1% from uh from Chen Pao. So by having like these hazards up, you're just dealing that little bit of damage that puts them over the edge and makes it so they can no longer live hits. So yeah, that's what you want to go for. For this first set, also its abilities suck. Uh, it's it's either Torrent or Sharpness. Sharpness is a phenomenal ability. Torrent is a pretty bad ability for this guy, because um, you're you're I don't know. There's only one set that's ever going to be at like one HP, and it's how do I explain it? If you're running Sharpness, your best water move is already boosted by fifty percent. So there's like no point in not running it unless you're running like a special attack invariant, which you shouldn't. Uh, but yeah, this first move set is just going to be Focus Sash. Like I said. If you're not getting spikes up, you're not using this thing to its full potential, and this is a good way to guarantee spikes. Of course, you could also have like a fake out Pokemon next to it, but um, with the Sash, you're guaranteed at least one to two sets of spikes, and this does allow you to run something like Taunt. Um, however, Sacred Sword is also a great move that's boosted by Sharpness. So yeah, but I think Taunt is pretty essential. Uh, we're running just Focus Sash, Sharpness, Terra Ghost, so we can't be faked out and have our, uh, our Sash broken. Uh, we're running max attack, max speed with the Jolly Nature, and 4 HP. Basically, this thing is going to play about as, as like, normal as you would expect it to. Um, it's going to want to go for Sleaseless Edge turn 1, unless you're facing down like a non-mental or Cresselia, in which case Taunt is going to be pretty essential. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing about Sharpness that like makes this guy pretty decent is that uh, you do have two options in like your water move. Ceaseless Edge obviously isn't the strongest move. It's 65 base power. It's going to be boosted to 100 um, about, but Aqua Cutter is 70 base power, meaning that if you give that a sharpness boost, that 50% is going to send it to 105. And if you want to run Razor Shell, a move that can miss, but is still pretty strong, uh, you get a, a slightly higher increase in that power. I believe half a 75 is like what, 37 when you round down. So 75 plus 
37 is 112. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that's not the worst. It's actually a pretty strong move at that point. But yeah, um, other things as its disposal, like I said, our Sacred Sword, which basically becomes um, 90 plus you know 45, which is uh, 135 base power. That is very strong. Sharpness is a very cool ability when you have access to Sacred Sword. And because of that, you could also run like Terra Fighting if you really want. Uh, but yeah, as far as weaknesses go, I think that like Ghost is fine for a Terra typing. Uh, just because you want to like maintain that focus sash but if you want to go for a defensive terra typing i think that's more suited for the assault vest uh set that i have right here so uh this is an assault vest hisuian samurai basically i just calc this thing so ceaseless edge will usually ko a flutter main and if it's not choice specs you'll usually live a moon blast uh yeah so we have max hp 172 attack which is just the attack bump uh, 4 defense, 68 special defense, and 12 speed. The reason you want that 12 speed, and I stress this in a lot of my videos, um, is because Samurott is the 85 speed tier. With 12 speed, you hit 107, which will allow you to um, outspeed opposing Dragapult uh, under Tailwind. However, if you want to decrease some special defense and make it so you outspeed opposing Rillaboom a lot of the time, a lot of Rillaboom will like speed creep to around like 111, 112. They'll, they'll get pretty high up there. So if you really feel like it, what you could do is just dump four special defense in there and the rest into your speed stat and hope that you're faster than a Rillaboom because Samurott does not want to get wood hammered. However, if you do end up getting wood hammered, you can play defensively. I think Terra Poison is actually a pretty phenomenal uh, defensive typing for this. By turning into a poison type, you're only weak to uh, a few things. You're weak to Psychic, you're weak to Ground, and is that it? Are those poisons only weaknesses? Am I, am I right? Yeah, I think that's it. Weird. I don't know why. I thought there was more. Um, yeah, so by being only weak to Psychic and Ground and having Stab Dark and Stab Water, you can deal with those pretty well. Like, it isn't the worst thing ever. Um, Sacred Sword is just going to be like a nice uh, move for this thing to run because it's going to want to be able to hit um, opposing Dark types, opposing Steel types, um, and also bypass, if we end up seeing it in this format, uh, Don Dozo Defense Boost. That's pretty useful. And Aqua Jet is really nice uh, just for being able to pick up KOs uh, on like Focus Ash Pokemon or just getting some chip damage on much faster Pokemon before you go down. That being said, there are other moves you could run over Sacred Sword and Aqua Jet. I think Sacred Sword or Aqua Jet, you need to have at least one of them. However, you could replace one of them for Icy Wind. Um, Icy Wind is a really strong move, not because of the damage it does, but because the speed control it provides your team. If you go for an Icy Wind and you have like a, a partner of Fluttermane, well now basically by going for Protect plus Icy Wind, you've guaranteed that your Fluttermane will now outspeed theirs and you can just KO it. Or if you're facing down like an opposing uh, Iron Bundle and you have Booster Energy Speed Fluttermane, a Protect plus an Icy Wind will allow your Fluttermane to outspeed the opposing Booster Energy uh, Iron Bundle. So yeah, uh, I do think Fluttermane is one of the best partners for this guy uh, just because, you know, Special Attacker physical attacker it's good to have that generally in pokemon you don't want to have all one type of attack uh but more importantly it's the hyper offense aspect of fluttermane like choice specs fluttermane is like really really powerful uh pixie pape uh, fluttermane is also pretty good being able to ko those things after a set of spikes um is really just super useful for fluttermane since a lot of things will just calc to barely live it Rillaboom is a questionable partner, but one I do find pretty good. Um, Samurott is more beneficial to Rillaboom than Rillaboom is beneficial to Samurott. Uh, Rillaboom, of course, will set up Grassy Surge, Grassy Terrain, which will heal everything, which isn't good for your spikes, right? However, Samurott being able to cover for the fire weaknesses of Rillaboom pretty effectively is, like, really, really nice. Uh, so, yeah, like, that's, like, the only reason I'd really throw this guy on here. And because, I mean you're more likely than not going to have a Rillaboom on your team. Like, it, there's a good chance you're just going to have one, so just might as well note them. Ursa Luna, phenomenal partner for this guy, once again because of that hyper offense thing. Sending things uh, in range of uh, Earthquake or Facade or just breaking Focus Sashes, because Focus Sash is the way a lot of Pokemon deal with Ursa Luna in this format. Uh, will allow Ursa Luna to pop off a lot easier. And just unlike Trick Room teams, Samurott isn't a bad choice. Like I said, it's only 85 speed. So if you want to go for like a bulkier variant, you could like drop all that speed, maybe just four speed and like put the rest in your spit F. Um, and that's that's just super nice. Uh, also just, yeah, Ursa Luna is like a phenomenal partner for basically everything. Uh, speaking of just phenomenal partners for basically everything and Trick Room, I guess, Heatran is really, really good with Samurott. 
uh, because Heatran just annihilates opposing uh, grass types. Samurott does not want to have to deal with opposing Amoongus. It doesn't have access to Psycho Cutter as far as I... Yep, it doesn't have access to Psycho Cutter, which would have been great. Uh, but being able to deal with like opposing Amoongus with this thing, being able to deal with opposing Urshifu because, you know... You might be thinking, Heatran doesn't deal with opposing Urshifu. Well, it has the uh, the Psych button, now I'm a Grass type, and you can just like smack him with like two Earth Powers and then they don't beat you because you're so physically defensive, and you resist Surging Strikes, and Close Combat doesn't do that much anymore if you're like bulky enough. So, yeah, being able to deal with opposing Urshifu, which can both uh, hit Samurott pretty hard, uh, is very useful. And just, it's like a bulky Pokemon. Like, bulky bulky boys like hanging out with bulky boys. That's generally the trend of this uh, format. Um, let me just go through a couple of other really quick notes. Like I said, I do think that um, Pokemon like Chien Pao will benefit quite a bit from the fact that uh, you're breaking Sashes, but also like sending Fluttermane into range of Ice Spinner. However, I hesitate to say that these two are actually really good partners for each other, just because they share that dark typing, and Hisui and Samurai isn't going to Terra as often as like another Pokemon would. It's pretty comfortable with its typing, and so is Chien Pao. So, Having to waste a Terra on one of these guys just so I get swept by a Fluttermane feels a little bit weird. Um, other Pokemon that really appreciate Spikes, of course, those hyper-offensive Pokemon like Basket Legion. Uh, I would even say that, like, Urshifu Dark really appreciates getting those, like, Sashes broken. Uh, like, Choice Specs and Namorous appreciates getting Sashes broken. Golden Go especially really likes this Pokemon. Um, like, Specs make it rain deals so much damage that, like, just making sure that nothing's living that hit in any, like, situation is just a, a phenomenal thing for this guy. So, yeah. Can you see a trend? A lot of this video has been me repeating the fact that, uh, Spikes are useful, but no one's really used them before because you don't, like, it's not worth it. It's not worth sacrificing a move slot to set up Spikes, where Samurott being able to just passively set up layer after layer after layer of spikes by uh, hitting this move over and over again is really good. Uh, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Hisui and Samurai. If you guys, uh, you know, enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know what Pokemon I should tackle next. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.